good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where in the world you are, and of course, what time of day or night it is either. Welcome to the podcast Up on the Edge with Al and Owen. I'm your host, Alan Neild, Big Al, or just Al, whatever you want to call me. And each week, I'm going to be joined by regular co host Owen Sherratt and other special guests along the way, too. Right, let's get right into it. This is the podcast Up on the Edge. It's a drill. I'm now here. Fancy seeing you here. Hello there. See so you've decorated, darling. It's bloody marvellous, isn't it? Loving your styly. Do you like... Yes, my styly, baby. Yeah. I've Can't been thinking be a... about other listeners. Yeah. Oh, somebody's waiting to come in. Zoom user. Hmm. Hmm, sure what that meant? Yeah, go on, why not? Recorded, should, we, yeah. should, we, should, we, should we see who it is? Yeah. Let's see who's at the door, Al. Let's see who's, There's somebody at the door. The door. There's somebody at the door. Who is it? Who is it? Who's it going to be today? Who's coming through the square window? It is. It's connected to audio. It's connected to audio, but he's not connected to video. Oh, ah, there he is. Evening, young man. Ramsbottom. How are you, gents? We're all right, you handsome devil. <laughs> yeah. Just look at that. The, 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 the sheer panic in his face. Oh, my God, God what's going to happen? The pair of you together. Look at that behind you. I'm more interested in the fact that Owen's in his bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bedroom oh, DJ, you. me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matthew. Now, what, what? What, what do you think of this, <laughs> then? Look at this. Look. It definitely looks... It looks familiar. Does it look familiar? Oh, bless your cotton socks. You shouldn't leave your keys lying about, mate. I oh, know. Have you changed rooms? Something's happened in there. What are you yeah. doing? Decorated. What's well, yeah. that in the background? Looks like some decent DJ kit there. It's, yeah, it's, all, it's all pioneer stuff, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> Down with the kids. <laughs> hey, so, but what I've got to say is, is that... Uh, the room that I use with all the lighting and one thing or another is a damn sight better than Ken Barlow's love child's room there. Look at him. Hang on a minute. How can you say that? Al? You'll let you to join your eyebrows on. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Don't they? They look like I've been drawn on them. Like my big aunt Owen, who's in the nineties. I... She puts hers on with an eye pencil. Do you know what I do with my eyebrows, right? This is true. I shave my eyebrows every time I use the clippers on my head. Yeah. I do my eyebrows as well. Not all the way down to the wood, like I do my head, but I think it's the number one I use on my eyebrows. Well, I don't know what you're doing, but you ought to stop colouring them in, mate. Oh, man. I so it much. all right. Oh, it, I'm sure one of the kids did it while you were asleep or something, like in a stag do. So, so then, Matt, um, <laughs> welcome to our little soiree. It's all right. Yeah. It's, it's nice of you to have me. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure because... Uh, Let's face it, you, you, you've done quite well, really, in the area, haven't you? I mean, barring, obviously, selling, you know, me, me favourite home, second home. But <laughs> we won't go into that. Well, you can go into it if you want. I think it's... Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm all right going into it. It's, yeah, uh, no, no. So, obviously, for those that don't know, um, a few years ago, is it five, nearly six years ago, uh, yeah. Matt, pur- Matt purchased the Revolution and uh, took over... Made a, made a few changes, uh, increased the listenership and uh, the output of the station. And i uh, got to say, it's been, uh, it's been all right to work for on personal uh, things. But then again, I, I was there till the end, uh, whereas uh, you were showing the door, weren't you? Music just got a bit <laughs> shit, so I cleared it <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have doors to fix apparently he needed to yeah <laughs> blue, yeah yeah most people have freezes but those... not Al <laughs> yeah he needed to he needed to fix those screws didn't he really I, I remember the day uh, very very clearly that <laughs> I threw a set of keys at you you know so I'm, I'm just going to put it out there on this occasion I left I, I wasn't fired normally I get fired sure. but it was just it was it was just time but I've got to say, he's one of the nicest guys I've ever worked for. He's a top bloke. Oh, he used to be. Nice um, well, we, we, we tried to. 
Well, we didn't just try. We, we, you know, we tried to uh, do our best. We tried to make it uh, as uh, local as possible. Um, we did definitely connect with the uh, other stakeholders that I call in town. And it was a lot of fun. And the, the, uh, the changes were never, were never uh, personal, were they really? They were just... No, um, no it's business, I suppose, at the end of the day. Yeah, and also just a direction. I think, I think yeah. what... I listened to another podcast with D Ford from uh, Bowie yesterday, uh, and it, it was, became really apparent that there were gone are the days where um, uh, you, it, it's, it's a debate whether you, whether you don't change or you do change. You've got the t- the world's changed. The world's been changing yeah. for a long yeah. time, and, uh, and this year's just shown how quickly so many things can change as well. Yeah. You have to just you just have to adapt. And, uh, and get on with it, I think, really. So, yeah. why North East Manchester? Why? Why North East Manchester? Yeah. Um, originally, uh, well, yeah, I don't know if you know the story. The story is that uh, I was working for a radio station in the West Midlands and um, uh, I was made redundant. Uh, they looked after me. Uh, that's now part of Bower as well. Uh, and I decided to talk to three different organisations. One of them was uh, a guy called Steve. <laughs> and um, Is Steve, it, uh, Lord uh, Peng you're talking about now? Yeah. yeah. I was chatting to him for two or three months about... And he was struggling, I think, because he'd, uh, uh, he'd worked really hard and, and ran out of... Uh, Right, out of steam, and, uh, and it seemed like a good idea, and it, it was a good idea. It was a lot of hard work, especially in the beginning. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and I'm from Bolton originally, so it was, good, it was a good it was a good reason to get back to the northwest and out of West Midlands. Um, uh, there was a, there was a little bit that, that wanted to come back. Yeah. What about, what about St Bolton then? Um, I, I used to live in North Bolton and Bromley Cross, so. Uh, posh. So was, not that posh. Oh, it's not double, no, is it? Let's be brutally honest about it. <clears throat> it's uh, it's all right. It's it's nice part of Bolton. It's definitely the nice part. But um, uh, yeah, you sort of. It's not where I live now, is it? Only well, child it growing up, then, were you? No, no, no. I've got a sister. Right. Don't be started. <laughs> <laughs> set no, don't set no crap off him. He paints his <laughs> eyebrows on Matt. So, so <laughs> even though. Even though you've no longer got the radio station in your stable, you are still keeping things local, aren't you? Because, uh, of course, for those that don't know, you've also got your, you say you mix them, but your hands uh, on the Oldham Chronicle, which I do believe is the longest local running paper, or it wasn't until it was... Yeah, it's 1860 odd, I think it started. And, um, and that's part of the story. So the, the Oldham Chronicle and the Revolution were partners for years in the beginning. The... the um, uh, the very late 90s, they, they did a partnership, uh, which made sense. Uh, that, that sort of weakened throughout the years. And then um, we were worried. We'd, we'd, we'd heard that uh, the Oldham Chronicle were making changes. We were worried about the building. So they actually owned the building. So we were worried that, the, that a landlord market at the hands of the building, and we weren't quite sure about that. So we bought the building and they were happy to sell it to us and while they were selling it to us uh, it was it was clear that the business was in um, difficulties with KPMG and we bought the building through KPMG really and through their guidance and then ended up buying uh, the, the uh, older moving chronicle title uh, and that, that worked really well for a fair few years really and um, uh, we, were, we were just some magazines which were uh, very localised as well um, and the big change for us, for, for everything, came with the first lockdown. It was, uh, yeah. the world did change for us, like, like it has done for so many other businesses, particularly small and independent businesses um, uh, in various sectors, obviously the hospitality sector has taken it on leisure, gyms have taken it really bad, but everybody that supplies to that uh, market struggled, and we obviously supply advertising to those type of businesses, so... Uh, it, was, it was tough. It was it's a knock on effect. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's um, been a been strange times. Well, since the beginning of the first lockdown, it's been strange times. 
And uh, like you say, I mean, in yourself in such a short period of time, we've seen so many different changes. Not all, well, very few were for the good. But have, it, have you seen any good come from the changes that you've seen? Or? I, think, I think there is a real sense of community at the moment. The problem is it's got to, it's got to mean something. Uh, and the danger is, one of my frustrations, I don't know if I say this, but I'm good at it. One of the things that really got my nerves was, was Tesco making this stuff, not making this stuff, but asking the staff to say we're all in this together. And you just think, come on, this is a massive organization that, that you made. They used to have the strength, they used to have the motto of sell everything to everybody all of the time. And, do you mean? and, and, and uh, so to these things like that, that you just heard that there is a bit of more of a sense of community. That people are definitely talking about that more, I think. But whether that would ever uh, be significant, I think, I think, I think it will be a mix, but we're now getting too used to clicking for our Uber Eats, clicking for our Amazons to to arrive. So um, we all do it. So you, you end up feeling slightly hypocritical if you're sort of moan about it. But yeah. um, I do think there is. I do think there is a sense of community. Um, I think the other thing, if you think about it, that, and this is always been the case as well, that Oldham as a town is one of the most giving places in the country, and never mind. So if you look at what Frank's doing, Frank Rothwell at the moment, do you know what I mean? 70-year-old Oldermer diving in a rowing boat across the Atlantic. And, and if you think about the well-known charities, whether it be Madler, Dr. Kershaw's, Oldham Action, um, it's, it's, it, and the list, of, you know, that... That's, that's odd, isn't it, from this town? I Doesn't that do make understand. you proud, though, for, you know, because yeah. you are a big part of this town now, you know, not, not just Revolution, but the Chronicle, and, you know, we're brutally aware of things that you're doing going forward as well, because it doesn't just stop there, does it? No, I think in terms of the proud, I do definitely feel like an adopted alderman, which sounds a bit odd, but I, I, but I'm very proud of the town. Um, and and it, it's got some amazing people, and it's quite odd, because... Because you've got this uh, Roy and Shaw element to it, you've got which is obviously uh, your turf, Al, and then you've got um, you've got sort of Failsworth and Chatterton that lean towards Manchester, and then you've got our friends in the hills that lean towards Yorkshire. <laughs> they don't really. Don't they? <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> It is very much, uh, it's, it's like a, a tale of two towns, though, isn't it? Because, you know, you, you're sort of 10 minutes away from arguably the best city in Europe, possibly the world, and you're five no, minutes no. away from, from just the best moorland and, and hills in the UK. Yeah. It's superb. doesn't get much better. It, it doesn't, but and it's one of those, it's like, it's like your kids in it. It's like you protect it, you love Oldham, and you really get into it. But you also know that, the reputation out of Oldham, if you go and chat to some, uh, whoever, yeah, somebody from Bolton, or, yeah, or somebody, well, Bolton probably is similar, isn't it? I think Bury's doing well as a town, and well, Bolton's probably similar. Uh, the great thing about Rochdale is it does make Oldham look good as well, in my eyes. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad you said that, and not me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um. I, th I think it's interesting. Those two towns are really interesting. Um, but uh, look, you, you sort of, uh, we're, all, we're all Manx at the end of the day. I think that's yeah. really nice. So we're, and and Northerners, it's just what you can see at the moment on the tally, isn't it? That um, uh, we're, we're, all, we're all looking down our noses at the southern moaners because they're about to you know, shut the restaurants and it's a bit like, well, Welcome to the world. Yeah, yeah. Welcome yeah. to our party, yeah. Mm. But, I mean, <laughs> it's true, though, isn't it? But, I mean, the places like Rochdale, I mean, and for me, personally, I feel Rochdale and Oldham both underachieve a bit because, like I say, they've got so much in them and so many good people there uh, that they just probably don't get that respect that they deserve. No, so, absolutely. you know... When you say underachieve, what do you mean? I mean, they've got that much potential... That you know, like people, they go to when, when people say to me, Oh, going into town, uh, where they live in Rochdale, uh, and if that town's always been Manchester, you right. know, yeah, and it's not. And you think, Hang on, Rochdale's got a great city centre, but maybe it's got, got the same nightlife. Uh, same with Oldham, you know, at one point, 
you used to go to all them for a bit of a treat and go to butterflies and a few little bars and stuff like that. Yeah, the comedy circuit and there's so many good places. Uh, and working at the Rev, uh, a few of them used to advertise. It was that the American diner that used to all the, the ribs and the burgers and stuff like that. I mean, never tra- I've never got a chance to try it. That and place down at Failsworth? Is the what, sorry? The place down at Failsworth you're talking about, the old school it, bus. Is it the old school bus? Oh, mate, no, I can't no, even... No, no. Yeah. You'll think of Jack's Smokehouse when you That's the one, Jack ah, Smokehouse, yeah. yeah. But that, the, the, uh, I don't know if you're into the American school, he's a great guy, he's a typical, like, um, full of front, I don't know what I was getting on the boat, but uh, obviously it's a restaurant, but, um, uh, like, he's made a business out of a bus and some canopy, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Straw bales, it, you know, yeah. it, it don't get any better, does it? <laughs> Not really, no. What but, a business I mean, model. Yeah. Because I know uh, after, oh, it was uh, the leaving do that we went on, Hal, for the, the Wookiee. And yeah. uh, I ended up wandering around Oldham Town Centre <laughs> <laughs> with Tony Dino Conigan. And he, he got lost going home. I mean, I was all right. I got a bus into Manchester and just carried on. Uh, but, you know, there's, I thought there's so many great pubs here. And yeah. you're only a stone throw. You can have a party one, then go to the next one. And you've got quite a tour, really, haven't you? Well, and it's such a great town centre. And you were going to arrange a pub crawl one, Sal, starting at the top of, is it Uddersfield Road? Yeah, top of Grand's Bar. It was called, yeah, yeah. they used to call it Dewey the Hill or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But you'd started off right at the top. It turned into an Indian restaurant just before it shut, and the pub's, it's closed down now, but it was, it was the uh, the Bull's Head at, at, at Grand's Bar. Um and there was, I think there was 13 pubs from, and I might, I need to count them again, but let's say 13 for the time being, uh, from Grand's Bar down into uh, Mumps Bridge. So where the old roundabout used to be at Mumps, yeah. um, where the, the bus station is now. That's so if you did them 13, 13 pubs, pubs, it'd just get you started to hit the town sense then, wouldn't it? Mate, I Let's wouldn't make it halfway it. down the hill, I'm telling you. Hey, I'll tell you what, I don't know I know Matt likes Don't say drink. Matt likes to drink, yeah. <laughs> no, we've had this conversation. I'm a, I'm a white rum kind of guy, I mean, I can't be, can't be filling myself with a barrel of beer. Anyway, <laughs> like, yeah. you, you've started doing uh, more DJing again, haven't you? Because that was originally your thing. That was your bag. And I'm not talking about radio. No. No, no I still, gosh. So... Dead briefly, I started DJing a nightclub in North Wales, believe it or not, at 17, uh, a place called Perrinell Hall. I then ended up DJing the two tubs in um, Barry for some time. And then I ended up DJing for a good, getting on for nine or ten years in Rockworld in Manchester in, uh, on Oxford Road. And, uh, yeah. and they were great days and I loved it. And I sort of did the residency um, on a Saturday night. Um, uh, and it, it was brilliant. That's how I got into radio in the early 90s. Um, and then recently, probably in the last couple of years, I was setting up for Elliot, believe it or not, I was setting up some CDJs for Elliot at, a, at an event. And um, thought, I like the feel of this. And then I started getting back involved. Uh, and some of the kit you can buy now, you can buy more as a circuit board. Um, so I bought a couple of those things just to sort of get back into it. Uh, and then I did about four or five gigs. I did bowlers. Car park. It was me and the hot dog stand. Oh um, yes. Um, uh, and, um, and, then I, and then I started doing some reasonable size gigs. And then even over lockdown, I ended up DJing off the back of a truck in the car park. Um, uh, uh, what was that? Out the office. Well, listen. The tr- originally, the truck was there. We 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 fabricated some uh, stuff so it could all be self-contained. And it is. It's, it's still there. Really. Um, is, is, that I, the, uh, is that the truck that you keep losing the keys to? Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, you can tell our story. Go on, tell our story. I, I, I got a phone. I, I, I can't even think <laughs> what had gone on, but um, it was during lockdown, and uh, you got your girls with you. You'd gone down to one of the local shops to pick some bits and bats up for tea for the girls, and, uh, and I got a phone call saying, uh, can you come and help me out? I've somebody's had my keys. I, I, I think they've nicked my keys, so they've got the keys to the car, the keys to your flat, and the keys to a radio station that's broadcasting <laughs> to the whole of the northwest. <laughs> so that's pretty much the problem of the time. Yeah. So um, yeah, we 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 had to sort of 
fabricate a way of getting into the the radio station and finding some keys so you could move the car and uh, keep your girls nice and calm and one thing and another. But um, hence, so anybody that sort of follows our antics on Facebook, there are photographs of me sat in uh, Matt's chair in his office, rifling through his drawers while he's stuck about two, three miles away. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, some interesting things there. And I've still got some mementos as well. And there's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, you know, you, you talked about the Oldham Chronicle. Uh, of course, you still got the Oldham Chronicle. I just wanted to point something out about that. You do know that I did a column for a couple of years in the Oldham Cron. No, I didn't. Just putting that out there for you. Was it called, was it called something quirky? It was it called... Go on. We could do a column though, couldn't we, Alf? Well, Al's together. big, Al stiff column now. <laughs> oh, that, that's another, that's his other sideline, that. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you pawn, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, we could, we could do a column, couldn't yeah, we? Yeah, could, could we? That, that would lift his uh, reading figures. Yeah, it's, it would by about three. Because mum would probably buy a copy. <laughs> so, should do something like that. So going forward with the Chronicle, because obviously when you first um, launched it, because it, it actually stopped um, going out on it, and you you relaunched it online at first, didn't you? Yeah, well, well we actually did the magazines first, so we did, and, and uh, it, it wasn't. It was a little bit of a case we weren't quite sure, but we realised that people were getting their local news as well as the national news online. And um, mm. uh, so we, we set the website up and, uh, quite quickly with the same guys, the guys at Rochdale Online that helped us do that and they were doing it previously for the, uh, for the uh, guys at the class. So, uh, and it, and it, it, it became really obvious that that's where the audience was. So um, it, it can, the crowd actually has up to sort of, to about 150, 160,000 people read the crowd every month, which is crazy. And they do it on the phones or their iPads or whatever. So uh, it's really important. We try our best to get the, uh, the newspaper out um, every week and uh, we've got a plan to do that. We've had a plan to do that before lockdown. So um, yeah. I think people still like to touch and feel the newspapers, but, but the, the, uh, uh, the younger, the younger, the younger wouldn't do that. They wouldn't dream about the newspaper. But, um, there's still a reasonable market. There's still a there's still a love for both the Cron and the Cron in print, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we'll see where we go. The challenge is, like everybody, you know, we've got enough challenges uh, with coronavirus. So I think I think we'll do it. And um, uh, we're working with our friends at Sandworth Independent. Um, uh, so we we kind of combined resources, uh, and that's worked really well. We've been doing. Uh, we did a review last year, 2019. And we'll do one again. Print is quite early, so um, it's it's really hard work, and but enjoyable. Uh, and uh, and there's something romantic about the fact that we're the custodians of the old Moving Chronicle um, mm. in the town, and so it stays. And um, uh, and we'll we'll keep pushing up until uh, we can't we can't we can't get it. So, what would you say to the the, the people that were avid listeners of? the radio station that was on the hill. Um, you've put a couple of things in place, haven't you, already? Do you mean what we do radio-wise, what we do next? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, this this mom spaghetti. Yeah. And there's well, all... Sorry, go on. Yeah, there's also, so there's mom spaghetti, which is... So really, the way that radio stations, it seems to be going, is becoming... Um, uh, there's obviously a lot of networking going on, a consolidation, which has happened with uh, all the big players, which makes sense. Um, and it's our belief that uh, we can create what we'd probably call a boutique radio station, which is quite niche. And it might not be your first choice, but it's certainly on the yeah, one, two, three on the dial in your car, if that makes sense. So, so the, the, uh, the idea of home spaghetti is it, something that's, that, that grew and that. Uh, we realised that we were transmitting out of uh, Manchester on DAB. So uh, we had a couple of weeks to uh, change the change the uh, signal of the radio station. Uh, and and most of it has sort of been created on the go. It's really good. It's, 
uh, I love listening to it in the car with the kids. And uh, my kids just go, this is a TikTok song. <laughs> it's, uh, um, it's the Sugar Hill Gang, or it's, yeah, yeah. or it's Fifty Cent, or it's uh, Grandmaster Flash, or it's Drake, or um, Usher, or so it's that kind of music. So, so we're quite. It's good, nice to be able to craft it, um, and it's nice to be able to do something different enough. Uh, but, but I, I, have to, I have a secret passion for for any music really that that straddles the late eighties and the nineties. Yeah. As well, as well as but you're, uh, you know, you, you make no secret of the fact that that your style of music is is more leaning towards rock. So, are the girls giving you advice now on what you should be playing on Mom Spaghetti? Well, they don't. They don't. I don't think even even. So, my kids are really young. They're sort of seven and ten. So, and they they don't they don't think about genres at all. They just uh, uh, George's into this really deep rap anywhere, this kind of really, I don't know, this is a name for I'm sure, but it's kind of dirty, di really dirty sounds, if that makes yeah. sense. Um, but, but you could be playing ACDC and they'd love it because it's on a Disney, Thunderstuff, it's on a Disney film, or yeah, you yeah. play a, or, or even some of the rap stuff's interesting, so some of the songs we played on Mums Getty, it's like Jay-Z when he sampled Diana Ross's Coming Home, or, um, uh, uh, I think you might know, Taurus B.I.G. when he sampled Led Zeppelin's Cashmere. And so it's those yeah. kind of songs that, one, the sample takes you back to the 70s, and then and then, and then the, the rap or the, the actual production takes you back to the 90s. Um, and then he's ended on TikTok where somebody's lip syncing to it with a with a vacuum cleaner in one hand and, uh, and something quirky in the other. And... We should do that. We should do a TikTok. I think so, yeah. I think it's Al. I mean, both you and Matt play instruments, don't you? Well, <laughs> can well, I just quantify I'm, te I'm, te I'm, te I'm teaching Al. It's getting there. <laughs> I'm teaching him, but um, he's a bit old fingers and thumbs with our base here. So, um, yeah, no, Al uh, Al's definitely uh, leads the way with that. I think uh, I'm, I'm more of a, uh, a background musician, but I, I much prefer now. I mean, I'm surrounded by guitars. There's probably about four guitars in this room, but uh, I'd much prefer to uh, to be messing around with DJ tech at the moment. It's fascinating. So we've got music in the cloud. You can mix the the algorithms for music. It's 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 never ending. And even on iPads, things like Launchpads, without getting too bored about DJ tech, you can write you can write music now by um, yeah. Launchpad and experiments and. Uh, 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 Gary Barlow, you can't, you know, it's got to be music made by humans. Is yeah. that what he said? Who's that, the club singer? Hey, don't knock the Barlow. The Barlow, joking. <laughs> all he needs is one of my organs. He'd be all out on Phoenix nights. <laughs> you can imagine him coming out the floor, can't you? The, uh, yeah, he could, yeah. The <laughs> <Black Bill. laughs> With all his whirlies. This room, this room for both. I think one band that I'm really into, and also... Uh, is Yazoo at the moment. And if you listen to bands like Yazoo or Depeche Mode or, um, and the production values, considering this is the late 80s, are just, just yeah. as good as... Was, it, was Yazoo Alison Moye? Yeah, yeah. It, it was, wasn't it? And it was um, Vince Clark. Vince Clark, Vince Clark yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he'd left um, Depeche Mode to start up Yazoo. Right. But I know uh, when I was talking to... When I interviewed the guy from OMD, Andy McCluskey... Um, he was saying when they started off, it's just two tape players. When really? they did all this, they put all the, the sounds and the backing music on two tape players, and they played that between them and a bit of keyboard, and, and that's how they got started. Yeah. Of course, their first gig was at Eric's in Liverpool, supporting uh, New Order, or Joy Division, as it was then. I didn't know that. Is that first... what was the album? Cause what was the album called? Or is that where the album came? Was it Upstairs at Eric's? Upstairs at Eric's was the first um, album. Was. That was that was yeah. Yasu's, that yeah. brilliant album. Uh, and again, that was all samples and her, her fantastic voice. Uh, you know, I've always found her sexy. Something Me too. about Alison Moyer. Still do. Even sort of live, not last year, the year before, I think it was. And uh, she's on stage and I said to uh, Sue and Rachel, we were there watching, I said, she's got new spanks on her. And she went, how can you tell? said, because she's not quite comfortable in him. And you know what? She tweeted it the following day. Sorry about last night. I was breaking some new knickers in. So, and that's how it's, yeah, that's how it is. But she's very, very interesting. But it's weird how you notice these things, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. The thing is, if you get the right size of Spanx as well, it's the, the, the top of it sort of fits in with the, you know, the waistband of the trousers. So you, there's no panty line or anything. You know what I mean? It's, is that right, Al? Oh, yeah. Let's give that yeah. a go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. How are you going to pull it back from that now? I was going to ask you, <laughs> funnily enough, I was going to ask you, you know, you've, um, uh, you, you know, a lot of the business people in and around sort of the Northwest now because of what you've been doing, like, you know, um, what about the uh, the local sex establishments and one thing or another? How were there? What's that supposed to mean? I'm just wondering if you visited them, that's all. No. It's probably I didn't say they're all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't get, to... pint of, can't get a pint of beer and a chicken sandwich do you, know? <laughs> you can probably get a chicken sandwich <laughs> <laughs> yes. we were talking actually um, the other night we were talking to uh, Kev from Entrance was it Kev we were talking to? yeah and, Kev and, O'Toole yeah, yeah and, and, and we were saying you know, I've never in my life visited either a brothel or uh, a lap dancing bar or anything. Now you, Matt Ramsbottom, are the most rock and roll human being I know. You, you've got to have been there and done that. This is a uh, crikey. This, um, the, the only, the only, I, I know, so the only story I, I could even make reference to yeah, that is, if you, well, it is it's the only story I know is, where if you go the big city station in Birmingham is called Beer Right. So when I left Bolton to go to this station, I got a phone call and I went to see him. And if I did, if you you won't know Birmingham probably, but but if where this station is, basically Birmingham's built around a street called Broad Street, and it is like Falarakit. It's just like Falarakit. <laughs> I mean. So within the space of a couple of hundred yards, um, it's a very early. It was in the in the uh, Took a long time ago. Now. I took it ten years ago. So there was a uh, last week. Uh, yeah, crying. Jeez. <laughs> oh, surely a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> no, no. Broad Street. Come um, on. No, that's it. That's it. Really, it was very lively. Working in the city, I only did it for about nine months. It was a bit too genuinely to have a go. Really, the um, uh, it's a. Uh, I wouldn't recommend having an apartment in the city while working with a with a radio station. You just end really? up, uh, yeah, it just gets a bit too far. I Gen- genuinely stop craving yeah. green space, enjoying <laughs> parks and whatever. I have a friend of mine that has uh, a graphic design company in the centre of Manchester, and uh, when he first set it up for the first ten years, he had an apartment uh, in the northern quarter, and in the end, he he, he had to sell it. He said, "I was going to die." He said, "Me liver." Yeah. I had to ring it out every now and again just to get See, rid of the alcohol. This is the thing about the other quarter. Everyone thinks it's great. And there's a place <laughs> called Mackie Mays, isn't there now, where you can get different food and stuff like that. And you get these people going, you go, oh, it's great what they've done here. It's smashing, isn't it? And I was talking to one bloke. He goes, oh, I can't believe the, the transformation. And all. I said, he used to come here to be D Fleet when he works at the council. Yeah. He went, you know what? So he used to drive in. And there was a woman who used to have a wig. And she'd go, right, take your clothes off. Put your paper overalls on, and you put your stuff in, and all the sunny days you'd sit on the roof and get a bit of sun. Seriously, but yeah, we used to go there, stuff swan sweet, and, and get the bit debugged there. And the I, council I used to spray all your bands. I thought you were taking the piss at first, mate. Oh, God's on, it's true. I, I will it's tell bit... you that for me, the best place in Manchester ever, it's gone now. It was brilliant, Sankey Soap. Sanky Soap. Mate, the Again, bands. Were around and, there, yeah. Yeah, it was fabulous. Yeah, and it it's was off Jersey of... Street. That's it. In the middle of all the, the mills. Run down textile oh. places. Yeah. You used to get out your car and you'd think, oh my God, is my car going to be here when I get back? Yeah. But you just time I parked my van there, and it wouldn't be. Yeah. So, <laughs> again, it's all changed, hasn't it, around there? Yeah, so. absolutely. So, listen, speaking of Manchester, Madchester. Yeah. Um, so, to Manchester's really. Uh, it started, as a, it started as, a, as a story there as well, but but uh, we like doing collaborative work, and we collaborated uh, with uh, some guys that have the Geo Goy brand, um, very lively. Uh, that's, guys. that's clothing brand, is it? 
Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Remember everybody, everybody was wearing it, and, and, yeah. and I'm still, I think it's still going, still going strong as well. And um, uh, and, uh, and and so we we started that really. It, it, it was it was from the bottom up. So we started with um, uh, the music, and we got involved in uh, and uh, music choices as well. Um, and we we we're, uh, we're trying to make sure that Mom Spaghetti and Manchester complement each other. That's the plan really for next year. So. Uh, they're both uh, of the same demo, so it, it is this sort of late eighties, nineties. Not that just all the music will be from that period of time, but but if you think about uh, if you if you've got a passion for Spike Island, you're probably 45, 48, 50 maybe. So yeah. so or if you remember Networth and Jimmy, then yeah, uh, that ilk you sort of between 40, 50, 55. So. Um, uh, there's some great music in that genre. Like, uh, I, I, I do, uh, uh, I do like uh, working on those kind of projects where you can um, uh, listen, listen to music and, and craft the music as well. So. Yeah. And then the final bit of that jigsaw puzzle will be will be something in the in the rock genre, which will I've sort of on purpose waited because uh, I because I work with uh, Kevin Ellis. And I have done on the on the music for Manchester, and, and I will do um, on some of the development for uh, Mom Spaghetti, and and then for the rock thing, I'll probably uh, I'll probably go it alone then, because that's 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 yeah. your baby, because you had yeah, a rock so, uh, Well, I just I'm like I just I do I do it, it's very so it's a, the music is very wide, but that it's it's music reminds you of places and taking me back to rock world. It was a great time as well. So, uh, and some of the music we played, I actually got fired at the end. It's a true story. I'm fired for playing too much Prodigy. It's honestly a true story. So the manager, his little, uh, Paul is called, a little Maltese guy, and he came on to me and said, oh, the customers are complaining, and you play too much Prodigy and the Chemical Brothers. We need to just uh, let you go. And uh, I was mortified at the start. Yeah. But, uh, but, that, but, you can, but you can, it's fine when you can win out. I did think of like a year or so later, being fired for playing too much Prodigy, you don't get any more Rockwell. Really. No. <laughs> See, where Rockwell was on Oxford Road, I know Rockwell was downstairs, wasn't it? And they had Fagans. Downstairs, Rockwell was where yeah. Fagans was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Fagans was in the middle. Then upstairs was a place called the Tropicana. I remember going there when I was 14. Really? Yeah, that yeah. Oh, I tell you. Oh, was that Robin Rally night? No, no, I used to go on a Friday night, uh, get changed from school, go me and mate, and then uh, we go and have a few beers down there. Did your mum know? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so why are you there? You were in Discotheque Royale as well, weren't you? Yeah, right? I'd, I'd had a go at that one. <laughs> I've been around a few, but I won't, won't go, won't be see dead in them now. <laughs> I think the last time I went to a nightclub in Manchester, it was, uh, oh, not, oh, the TV That's 21 cool. bar. Oh, yeah. The press club, God, I've been barred from there as well. Did um, you get barred from the press club? I'll tell you, it's a funny story. I went to the bar, and uh, this woman came up to me. So, it's your birthday, sir. So, no happy birthday, love. And uh, she said, How old do you think I am? So, I thought, air on the side of caution. I said, Oh, about 40. And now she slapped me, saying, she can, I'm 32. So, <laughs> It was it's probably me. about I five thought, o'clock in the morning as well, though, wasn't it? It, was, it wasn't far off, yeah, yeah. But yeah, what made it worse about three weeks after was at Main Road, and I turned out, and this woman sat behind me, three rows back, with her two sons. Really? <laughs> yeah. It definitely wasn't thirty-two. Yeah, I was a bit sober <laughs> then. She, she might have been about thirty-two. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> right, I suppose we get to the point where we need to wrap this up. So going forward, then. Mom Spaghetti yeah. uh, and Manchester. If people wanted to listen to this, it's got to be on DAB, hasn't it? Uh, the, the, yeah, it's coming out of Manchester. The transmitter is on a trial uh, transmitter out uh, off the top of City Tower in Manchester. So it's not as uh, strong as uh, uh, signals that are coming as the red did off the uh, Civic Tower. But um, good old said, but it's only a trial transmitter. So, so that, that's where that is. But you can just uh, listen online, you can just click on it. Yeah. Or okay. oh, shout Alexa. Or oh, yeah. shout Alexa playing Mom's Spaghetti yeah. Radio, yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's all of that happening, which I find really good fun, and I think it's going to take a few years, but soon um, 
that, that's that's where we'll be. We'll, we'll carve our niche in a kind of um, in, a, in our own place and um, uh, and let the big uh, nationals do what they're good at, which is being big and national. Yeah. And uh, awesome. just going forward as well, the Oldham Chronicle, uh, is there a column in it for Al and Owen? Um, there's a, a, a wanted uh, column. God. Uh, where you put these faces in for anybody that owes anybody any money. <laughs> Matt Ramsbottom, thank you very much indeed. You're very welcome. It's nice to see you, Jones. Cheers, Matt. You take care, pal.